All right, today we've got an import unboxing. Normally I don't show these because, well, there could be a lot of death. We don't know that. There is a lot of money. Today with fish and plants on the other side, it's about $3,000 worth, and that's wholesale cost. And there's some cool stuff in here, though, and I'm praying they're not dead because I just have a feeling they're not going to come in awesome. I don't think they're going to come in dead, but we'll, we'll just get to it. All right, so this is Robert. He's a store manager here. He does ordering, does quarantining, all that stuff. We've got the lights on that we normally never have, so that way hopefully you can see what we're doing. I know it's loud and bubbly in here, but that's a quarantine room. So let's see. Let's, let's take the first look, see what we got. Hopefully it's right. good news. Kick out these newspapers. Yeah, well these are in English, so it's not even that crazy. Uh. Heat packs. Still warm. All right. All right, bag number one. Yep, pull her up, what do we got? Like silver tip tetras. Silver tip tetras, I think we got 300 of those. Yeah. So the, you go ahead and do what you're going to do. I'm going to explain kind of what goes on there. There's a floating piece of styrofoam in each bag. That lets us know a number. So sometimes if you have 10 different types of Tetras, you're not sure what they are and you want to know where you're putting them. That's what that is. They double bag them and typically the water is going to be like kind of this neon green color. That's usually nitrofurazone, which is a antibiotic. So we're pouring it through a net here. We don't uh, acclimate anything and Normally I don't explain why, but I got time since he's doing the work. Uh, when, so we use a transshipper. So this comes direct from a farm to someone in LA. They instantly rebag them in new water because they've been in a bag since probably Friday, right? So they rebag them in water that's higher pH with lots of baking soda in it basically to buffer. And so they've already been through water change or like, you know, drastic water temperature changes. And then in here, we plop them in, and the fastest thing is to get them out of the ammonia. Now the farms include a little bit of that, as I, we call it, clown puke gravel. And the reason that's there, that is beneficial bacteria. So they break down a little bit of ammonia, and that's just the way they do it. That's, you know, that's, that's what they think helps. And I can't complain, these fish came in well. We'll let the tag float at least until we're done. Uh, putting them away so we can make sure like wait a second we got double ship this and something else is missing type of deal so go ahead and go on to the next one bag number two uh oh I see deaths stir by corridors yeah these are stir bys in here not too many deaths it doesn't yeah. look like so you go ahead and do your thing I'll explain so this one has blue water so the blue water typically is methylene blue. That's gonna help keep funguses down and be a little bit of antibacterial. The problem with Corydoras is they stab each other in shipment. And so, let's see, we're pouring them in there. This is way easier if two people do this, by the way, but normally he has to do it alone anyway. So we're gonna get them all in the net. Got the camera pressure going on. That's right, the camera pressure is the hardest part. This one comes with blue gravel. As you can see, there's already some blue gravel in here. Got stuck. <laughs> yeah, you just got stabbed by one of them. So, now we take a look, and I think this one was 100 Corydoras, or 100 Sturbys. Looks like right off the bat, we've got five down. So hopefully with meds and everything, we'll have you know a 95% success rate on that. Now, we obviously we hope for better. We hope it's like this, right, where it's like, I'm not sure there's a casualty yet. Now there is like a couple that are skinny in there, so those are like, well, I don't know what to do about those. But this so far, boom, five, you know, five gone. I'm not, I'm not unhappy with that shipment. There's always risk, so that's just kind of what it is. All right, what do we got in the next one? By the way, we haven't found any of the cool stuff yet, so this is just normal stuff for us. So each bag we switch nets because each of these could have come from a different farm. That's why we use a trans shipper. They consolidate. Black neons. Yeah, there should be. So one of the funny parts is not very much water in there. There's 400 of those. And you can see the density through the top there. This is a, a cheap fish, but usually very, very hardy. If you're new to aquariums, this is a great beginner fish. One of Rob's top five fish in the shop. Yeah? Yeah, I love these guys. I think they're a little underrated. We're thinking about putting them in with Murphy. I do think they're underrated. Can you see them big? They're really nice. I kind of even like the white cloud of the Tetras a little bit. All right, so we'll see them go in. We'll see out of 400 who's doing well. For the most part, I don't see any bodies down low. 
Now this is only half the battle here. Like obviously, they're very susceptible in those closed conditions to disease. So we have to treat them, we're gonna show you what we do and all that kind of stuff, but you know, this is the first part. Get them in and hopefully they're alive. Then make sure they don't die to illness and then get them healthy and sell them. Like, so this is just phase one. All right, what do we got next? All right, bag number quattro. Looks like cherry barbs? No, glow lights? Cherry barbs. Looks like cherry barbs, yep. I think there's 300 of those. Got some antibacterial neutrophurazone. Now that gets rid of beneficial bacteria as well, typically, so that's why we don't use it very often. I'm gonna make sure we get them all out of the bag there. I think we did. I was just mentioning, I make Robert's probably like, oh geez, I must have missed one <laughs> on camera. All right, looking, oh, we had one bounce. Where'd it go? We gotta find them. All right, every once in a while one will get stuck to the net. We'll get him in there. He stops flopping. Life in the shop. All right, get him back in there. So, looks like there's one that's struggling. That wasn't the one that, like, you know, bounced onto the floor. But so far, out of 300, if we've got, you know, one struggling, that's another good bag, I think. All right, last in this box. I don't know what that is. We gotta figure out what it is, yeah. Bag number five. Those are glow lights. Yeah. Yep. So yeah, it's 300 of those, I think. Now, you keep doing what you're gonna do. I'll show off the shop, or the quarantine room here. So right now, we're kind of saving some of these higher tanks because I know I have some fish that are more susceptible to ick and want to be warmer. Like there's some special rams in this shipment, stay tuned. Uh, and I know, we know they want to be warmer. And so naturally, between this middle row and this higher row, there'll be a two or three degree difference. And part of it is because of lighting. So because we have lights underneath to light it up, that heat rises and transfers up into the tanks. How'd we do on that batch? See. Looks like there's one down. Yeah. Yeah, maybe one or two down, but it's looking pretty decent. All right. So that's box number one. We're gonna get box number two. We gotta pour out all of this very ammonia-ridden water with lots of medicine and uh, switch out nets, because all those have been used now. We're gonna go clean nets, and we'll be right back for box number two. Box numeral two, no! This one better be good. I want this one to be as good as the last one. Please, let it be as good as the last one. All right. Ooh, rose lion sharks. So, nitrofurazone in the water. As you can see in this bag, this one's a little different. It's got the, the corners bundled up. Different vendor that we, that we, the different farm we would have gotten it from. And they do that so no one gets pinched in the corner as the box might shift in shipping. So a lot of times they'll do that on Corydoras. They didn't do that with those ones. Um, but you'll see that with, you know, stuff you buy online and that kind of stuff. So yes, this is what this would be. I think 50 roseline sharks came in at a decent size. Not sad about that. Sometimes they come in and they're just tiny. Uh oh, got some on the ground. They they hop a lot. Know if I put a top on this guy? Oh, the one jumped out. Yeah, and one jumped out. Yeah, so we put a top on the rose lines. They're real jumpers. So that's what these are here for right here. Go ahead and grab one of those. That's also, so you notice Robert went straight down low. He already knows these jump. They jump out of a net, they jump out of the tank. And so with fish that you know jump, you put them in a lower tank. So you're down when they jump, they fall four inches as opposed to, you know, if he was going up here, it's a six foot drop and they can literally die from that sometimes. So over the years, you learn tricks of like, these are gonna jump, and all that. And we're not even editing that out. That's just, that's what naturally is happening at your stores. And so, you know, just know that. All right, what do we got next? Let's go with this uh, Kool-Aid blue water here. Yeah, a lot of methylene blue in there. Oh, here we go. Here's the Rams. 
the Dark Knights. These are supposed to be the Dark Knight or the Black Rams. They're stressed out, so maybe they're not that black, but these ones will definitely go in a high tank. That is a lot of methylene blue, which I hope they're getting better. Normally I don't import Rams because they were coming in with such problems. I'm gonna grab, is that the new net already? Yes, yeah, All right, net. perfect. Yeah, I'm probably gonna put this here, and that way if I have to run a heater. Yep, we're close to, the, close to that, yeah. So I'll have to get out of the way as we film this, but. Yeah, that is a lot of blue. Yeah, I'll hold that to help. They give them a lot of water too, which they must know there's problems with shipping rams. Finally, it's taken years to get this way. I test it like every year. All right, it's all back up here. Lots well, of customers watching what we're doing. <laughs> so they're not. So usually the rams don't come in dead. They just fall apart immediately from. Like you can already see, I can see some fungus stuff already on some of the fins, a little bit. They're not nearly as dark as like um, Dean's Ram, so we'll see how they darken up once they're not stressed. Put the top on this just to get a little more heat trapped in here too. Yeah, that makes sense. Trap in the heat that we're pumping in and yeah, a good idea. I was, I was literally thinking, I'm like, is he just doing that to do that? Like, I normally wouldn't do that. That's a good idea. I wouldn't have thought to do that. Yeah. I think these are a mono shrimp. Mono shrimp. So these will probably, we'll go ahead and probably put on them. Yeah, there's not a lot you can do because they've already been raised in brackish. And uh, so they'll go right out on the floor in the mono shrimp tank. That gets done. We'll set that one off to the side and we'll do that one later because there's a bunch of people out there and it's going to ruin filming. So we're going to shut down. We're going to go to the box number three. All right, the third box. That's like the one time it's in English, weird. <clears throat> All right. Still warm. All right, I think these are angelfish. Yeah, should be the platinums. Yeah. Looking pretty good. Going down, we'll see. Yeah. Apologize for the background noise. There's a lot of people outside this room we'll keep put these watching us. Yeah, here. bigger yeah. tank would help. Then we can shoehorn them into a smaller tank, but since we know we've got a couple of bigger tanks open. And these aren't hard to catch. Like you put a bunch of tetras in a small t or in a big tank, much harder for employees to catch. Can you help with that? Thank you. Yep. Yeah, a different tag because it comes from a different continent. They have a little other thing they have in there. Oh yeah, another little like uh, ammonia absorber. Yeah. yeah, that's usually what those are, is ammonia absorbers. But they look pretty decent. Some of them are pearl scale, so these are the ones that are like worth more money. Let me zoom in on that. They got the pearl scale to them, but you can see they're disoriented. And not many of them have the pearl scale. Most are just a platinum. Most are not platinum pearl scale. So, you know, that platinum gene, but the pearl scale itself, much nicer, in my opinion. All right. Three more bags in this box. We got neon tetras. Just standard neon, 300 of those guys. We usually put them up top. Yeah, that's what 300 neons looks like. You can see there's a couple few dead already. We gotta get the meds. These guys always die to bacterial infections. So erythromycin is gonna be very important with those guys. All right, what else we got? I'm trying to think what else I ordered. Oh, we got the swords. We got, the, we got that oh. special sword, so maybe... If they came in, I ordered them. I don't know yeah. if they came in. What are these? I think that is them. Yes. So these are, this is Corey's addiction to live bearers. 
This is a balloon sword tail. I'd never seen one before. They're expensive. <laughs> I'm interested to see them in a tank though, so let's get them in a tank, because I... They look so crazy in the pictures, and I just, I'm a sucker for it. I don't, you know, I have to experience it. I don't know if they're gonna be a train wreck, like, oh, they don't live very well, or. When I heard about you were ordering these, I was like, heck yes. Yeah, because other people will at least want to see them, whether you agree with them or not. Most people want to see them, just go, what is that? Oh, they're like Swedish fish red. They are nice and red. Oh my God, that one is so deformed. I don't know if I like that, That's, I gotta be honest. Like, some of them are amazing, but there's that one that's kind of like, I don't even know, like right there. It's got kind of a bent back, but I do love, so here's what I want to know. I want to know, like, in my opinion, sword tails are kind of brutes in a tank. Like, they can pick on stuff. I want to know if you dwarf size them, do they calm down? Whoa, that guy's amazing. This one right here with the long sword, it's like as long as his body is. I'm going to have to get Jimmy to get B-roll that guy, but that guy's like a show winner. See, if they all look like that guy back there, that's like, that guy's amazing too. Look, oh, wow. That guy's sword is twice as long as his body. <laughs> I don't know, it's pretty cool. I I don't know. Uh, show them off already. Yeah, I, I, it's either the best thing or the worst thing. Time will tell. We gotta get them healthy and see how they interact. There's a lot of color though. I could see those derping around in a, in a planet tank. A lot of green with your few red sword tails. Huh. If these are still around after a week on the floor, I might have to take them. Yeah, so we make all employees, Robert included, fish have to be out on the sales floor for one week before employees can buy them. Because otherwise, cool stuff just gets snatched up. Yeah. So, all right, what else we got? All right, I think these are the other swords. I believe these are red eyes. The leer tail, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Again, I'm a sucker for live bears. So yes, the oh, leer tail yeah. red swords. So let's put those in some water and we can take a look. They sold like hot cakes last Yeah. Time. If you bring them in, so that's one thing. If we bring in a fish all the time, like if I bring in a fish that sells like a hot cake every week, they stop selling. Because people are like, oh, I'll get those later. And pretty soon it's been years and they never buy them. But if they come in once every month or two, they go, oh, I better get them. So you can't always just carry oddball stuff. Things like neon tetras and that, sure, all the time. Cardinal tetras, yep. But you got to offer some variation, otherwise, Right. And sword tails in general like to be a little bit cooler, in my opinion, so we keep them on the bottom row. But see, I think those guys look good. You know, so again, it comes down to, you know, some people will be purists, they only want to see Hellari sword tails. But of sword tails, these are a man made strain. They've got all the color, which normally they wouldn't have color. We've crossed them with platies way back when. Now we've given them leer tails. And so I'm kind of the opinion of like, you know, if you think these are okay, then kind of by default, those are kind of okay. They're both man-made, you know, and as far, as long as someone gets into the hobby and learns about planet aquariums and then from there progresses and does what they want to do, mission accomplished. So, all right, let's get uh, the Amano shrimp out on the floor. All right, so now we're going to do the Amano shrimp out on the floor. One of the reasons is they really jump, they crawl out of the net, and it takes an employee at least over an hour to catch most of them when you transfer them to another tank. So, we find it best to put them straight into that tank and there's not really any meds you can use and they already usually are coming from brackish water anyway. So, by putting them into fresh that naturally would get rid of most things. And I've never I've never had a monos come in with any kind of parasite or anything. So, lighting is low out here so the camera's going to struggle, but Getting them all out of the bag can be a trick in itself, too. Get them all. They're running. Stay in the net. Get this in the water first. Yeah, and then we'll go back for any stragglers. But I think it's 200 or 250 Amano shrimp. And they ship them on these little nets because if shrimp don't have something to hold on to, they get stressed out. And if they put too many leaves, they start rotting and that can cause ammonia. So they put one tannin or one leaf in there for tannins. They put those to hold on to. And then they put that ammonia absorber in there to absorb ammonia on the way. Now, it doesn't look like we have a bunch of, you know, deaths or anything. So I would say that's a successful mono shipment. And with shrimp too, I always throw food in there right away. Yeah, because they normally are just starving. 
and uh, maybe I'll go grab something like that. We can help some customers and we'll come back and show adding the meds to the quarantine tanks in the back. All right, so here we have the Amano shrimp. I'm gonna start by putting a lot of calcium in there. We're using the uh, Zoomed Nano Blocks, which are these. And after a few minutes, you'll see them get down on it. And usually there's a star for calcium. You can see them starting to attack it already. After you know a minute or two, they'll be absolutely covered. But I find it very important to get calcium to them, and I use these at least once a week in all my shrimp tanks. One of the best sources, even if it dissolves in, it'll still add calcium to the water. You need to make sure your shrimp are eating calcium and there's calcium in the water so it doesn't dissolve shells. All right, gotta help customers. So first thing we're gonna start with is ICX. Everything gets ICX. And it's highly likely after all that stress and shipping, that we're gonna get ick. So we use Pond Strength Ickex just because we use so much we buy it gallons and gallons at a time. So, you know, we recommend everyone have it on hand. We recommend it our trio. And it makes it, you know, like you'll never hopefully have to do this much at a time, but in a store, it makes all the sense to, you know, we've got it dialed in to how much of the pipette to how much of the water. And with like, when I have like multiple fish, I like to ick X all the tanks. It's kind of like my little marker to yep. go in and do the medicine. So. Yeah, instead of doing like, oh, we'll do three here and then three over there. You do all the tanks so you can get one med. Then you switch the med so you don't accidentally miss. And then same thing we built in. So at the end, we go and we pull the cards. If you go, wait a minute, the water's not blue. You know you haven't medded that one yet. So it works out, you know, it's kind of a double system to make sure we're not forgetting to medicate anything because a lot of the meds are just clear. So that's one of the reasons I actually like ICX. One, it works, but then two, the blue color lets us know from a quarantine standpoint that we've actually done the quarantine. So now we're gonna switch meds. I don't know what we're going with quite next yet. It'll be either... Erythromycin, I don't really have like a rhyme or reason if I go erythromycin or general care if you guys are curious. Yeah, so there's no direct order or like, you know, it doesn't have to be one in front of the other or anything. Uh, the erythromycin is antibacterial. So it's highly likely with all this stress and uh, nipping on each other with cichlids and that kind of stuff. And we already said that how tetras are super susceptible to it. We want to fight off the uh, antibiotic or the bacteria with an antibiotic. And what, I, what I've seen personally is losing <clears throat> three or 400 tetras in the span of six hours because the bacteria can get going so fast on these fish. You can watch their bodies kind of rot away. So. And then we got the rams up top left still. All right. And the good news about these meds is they're not like exact. It's kind of one of those like, um, you know, you can be a little bit plus, a little bit minus. That's the way these meds work. You know, so right now one, one scoop treats 20 gallons. We're at 11 gallons. So we do, you know, a touch more than half of, of a tea, or half of a scoop there. So then the last med we put in is the general cure. Now the general cure is going to deworm them. It's highly likely that fish come in with problems of internal tapeworms and that type of thing. It can also work on a little bit of external parasites. Same thing, every tank's gonna get that. And uh, you know, it just helps, helps flush them out. You know, in our one week quarantine, this is what we do. We'll re we redose meds as needed. We're doing a water change, we'll redose tomorrow. If something was to get sick, like let's say, let's say these guys came down with horrible fungus. We would just keep treating the fungus. We wouldn't redose every single med every day. We would then switch the minute we know. So he's gonna keep doing that. The last step that we do typically, um, which we won't necessarily show on camera, there's not that much to do, but we'll go in and we'll pull all the bodies. So like that'd be like those five Corydoras and maybe there's gonna be a Tetra or two. And then we'll come back in at about three or four hours later and get anything that's not alive. So like this angelfish back here, really not doing well. Now, that angel might, might come back to life. If you pull them right now 
and think he's dead, he's still got a chance. Sometimes you get one or two that is really struggling acclimating. But as you notice, so we just brought in, you know, maybe a thousand or two thousand fish, and as I look at them, they look like they've acclimated and done well, right? Like I just kind of want to show that like all these tetras would start eating if we started feeding them. And so they're not just like all laying on the ground being horrible or anything like that. You know, besides these corridors, which are supposed to be down low, but for the most part, everything came in pretty well. These guys are start, starting to darken up a little bit, the Dark Knight Rams, and the swords are alive and well. So now what we do is we kind of turn the lights off up top and we just let them sit for three or four hours. We come back after we pull the few bodies that we have, and after that, we see what's, what it's like tomorrow. Usually it's the first day, like, you know, we'll have to come in here, and right now there's probably three or four dead tetras. Well, I don't see any, but I knew I saw, oh yeah, there they are, there's that group. There's a group of them right, if I can get right there, you see that little group on the bottom, we'll pull that. And then tomorrow there might be a, a few more stragglers, and then hopefully we're through it. And usually when you're buying this many, and this goes for you at home too, if they're good, they're good. If they're bad, they're bad. So the minute like we come in and 20 of these are dead, probably they are all not gonna make it. Like something tragic happened in shipping, or we've done something horribly wrong, you know, or the, you know something has gone wrong. But for the most part, you get a few deaths or catastrophic. It's rare that you'd be like, oh, only 25% lived. It's kind of an almost all or nothing thing typically with these giant shipments. And that's why a lot of stores will bring in smaller shipments. Uh, it's because they're afraid of the all or nothing kind of mentality of it. You got any last words of advice for anyone? Um, yeah, I, I gotta say, do the quarantine trio meds here. Yeah. Highly recommended. And if you can, get a quarantine tank. I finally, you know, two and a half years working here, I just finally set mine up like a month ago. Yeah, it's, it's too easy not to. Yeah. So it's uh, just learning some of the tricks and trades from here, I gotta say. I mean, it helps my fish game. You know, I've been playing with fish for. 30 some years so well you had a leg up you were only buying fish from here and you you were like quarantining them here so yeah. you kind of had a leg up but if you don't have that you 100% should have a quarantine tank at home